Okay, back to the bouncing ball with the squish. I left off wondering why the squish didn't look quite right. And if you thought about it, perhaps you figured it out. If not, let me explain something. Look at how um, the squish is going. The reason it doesn't look right is because the way scale works, the way actually all of these transform properties work is they these these digits, this digital information is always based on the anchor point. So the position is tracking the x and y value of the anchor point, which is this little target thing that's in the middle of the ball. Usually the anchor point by default is in the middle of whatever you've made or brought in here, okay? And it is in this case. Here's the ball, it's a square. If you draw an x through that square, anchor point's right in the middle of the ball. Now you can move it, but we haven't moved the anchor point yet. Um, so scale is related to the anchor point. So what's happening is when the ball is squishing, the top is moving towards the anchor point and the bottom is moving towards the anchor point. And if a ball hits the ground, the bottom of the ball isn't going to come up towards the middle. Um, the ball is going to squish. The force of the ball coming down is going to cause the top of the ball to move towards the bottom. So what we want to do is we want to really move the anchor point to the bottom of the ball. Okay. So if you come back here to zero, the way that you can move the anchor point is with this tool. It's called the pan behind tool. And it looks like a dotted square with arrows inside of it. When you click on that pan behind tool, one of the main uses of it is that you come over here and grab your anchor point and move it. Mine's kind of snapping, around, jumping. Move it to the bottom edge of the ball, like that, click. Now, that, it might muck up my animation a little bit. Let me get out of the anchor point, uh, pan behind tool and go back to my selection tool. Watch what happens now. The ball will come down, see how the anchor point's at the bottom? And when it hits the ground, um, well, what happened is since we moved the anchor point, um, it changed the position value. Remember how the position used to be at the bottom of the screen? So it's not that huge a deal. Um, we could correct the position if we wanted to, but now the squish looks right. So it comes down, hits the bottom, and the squish is now more correct because the top of the ball is going towards the bottom where the anchor point is, right? See how that kind of fixes it? If you go back in time and look at the... I just accidentally set a keyframe. If you... Um, see how that squish looks pretty nice? So let's play it in real time and look at it. Going like that, so it goes squish, squish. All right, it looks pretty good. So your squish kind of... Let me review these keyframes right here. What I've got is, at the beginning, this is it's just position and scale. So position is up, scale is round, I'm a circle. So this is up, round. When I jump forward to these two, this one is down, round. So it's up, round, down, round. This next one right here is a scale that is a squish. So it's up, round, down, round, squish. These two are copies of these two, so it's just another set of down, round. So it's down, round, squish, down, round. And then when it leaves, moves past this and starts heading into the future to this keyframe, this one is just up. And we don't, for some reason, need another round keyframe because it's already round from here. This keyframe, this is squish, this is scale squish, this is scale round. So it may seem kind of oddly counterintuitive, but it goes up round, down round, squish, down round, up. So these right here, that is my bounce. Um, I can get rid of all these here in the future. Whoops, too far. I just select everything from that point on and delete it because all I want is this. Up round, down round, squish, down round, up. And if I want to repeat that, I'm bringing my work area to make it longer. All I got to do is this. Copy the squish and the up. Right. So select those, copy them, move forward a similar increment in time and paste it. And now look what happens. It goes down, squish, back up, down, squish, back up. Okay. So this is bounce up. If I move forward in time and paste again, I got, this is another bounce up. And then paste it again. There's another bounce up. Okay. So let's look at this. It goes down, squish up, down, squish up. See how the ball is going off the top of the screen? Because I changed, when I changed the anchor point, 
it altered the position because the position is based on the anchor point. So you'll find that you know if you're doing an animation and you don't realize that you need to do something like we just did and move the anchor point, if you ever move your anchor point, any keyframes that you've already made are going to be different than when you set them because they're all based on the anchor point. So if you move the anchor point after you've done some animation with keyframes, you run the risk of having thrown the rest of your animation out of whack. Now, I could go back keyframe by keyframe and figure out what's wrong. Like this up thing, this up keyframe right here is off the screen. So if I sit on this keyframe right now, parked right on it using my arrows like this, if I park right on this keyframe and change the position value, I'm basically changing the value of this keyframe and correcting it. So now it won't go, when it comes up, it won't go off the screen. So you could go back and manually correct like this one, same thing. Make sure you're sitting right on it. If you're right next to it and you change it, you're going to drop an extra keyframe and cause a glitch in your animation. So you want to just park right on it using your arrow sitting on it. You can correct it like that. So now this keyframe is corrected. So you can manually go through and change all the ones that are broke like that and like that. The next one coming I didn't fix. See? This one right here? That one's not right. So I can use my little arrow hopper, jump back to that one, change it. Right? If this seems tedious and confusing and you want practice and you can't figure out how to change these keyframes, you could just delete these all and do it over. And at this point, I might recommend it because just doing this bounce once, and it's your first time keyframing, you might think, oh, I've got this, I'm, this is fine. And then you go to do it tomorrow, and you won't remember how to do it. So it's a lot like playing a musical instrument. You want to, anything you do once, I would say, erase it and do it again. And then erase it and do it again. If you can do it three times, you probably got it, okay? So I'm going to run through it one more time and, and do it correct from the get-go and not change my... Uh, not change my, I'm gonna change my anchor point before I even start animating so I don't have to fix anything. Do you know what I'm saying? Since I know that I have to move the anchor point, um, I just delete all my keyframes, I'm gonna go back to zero. So, redoing the animation completely. And let's pretend that I didn't move the anchor point, right? The anchor point is in the middle, right? I'm starting from scratch. Now, I know that I want the ball to squish a certain way, so before I set any keyframes, I'm gonna get my pan behind tool, move my anchor point to the bottom of the ball, anticipating the fact that I'm going to need to squish it, right? So, um, and to keep things tidy, I'm going to close this up, and I know that all I want is P for position and Shift S for scale. Those are the only things I need, right? So I'm going to turn them both on at zero. This is top and round. Position is up top. Scale is round circle. The link is broke already, so yours might not be. Just know there's a link there. I want it off so that I can change it when I do the squish, right? So I'm going to move forward to one second. At one second, I'm going to come up here, grab the ball, bring it down so that the bottom of the ball touches the bottom of the screen like that, just barely, pretending that this bottom edge is the hard surface of the ground. Um, I didn't mention this dotted line. This dotted line is your motion path, and what it does is it shows the location of your anchor point at every frame. So each one of these little dots is a frame and there are 30 frames a second so if I've moved one second if I counted all of these there should be 30 little dots and you will only see this uh, motion path when your layer is selected if I click off and unselect it you don't see your motion path you don't see your transform handle so if you're in After Effects and you think oh I can't see where's my motion path click on it to select it and you'll see it okay so I've got up round and I'm going to use my little arrow to jump here at one second. I already set a keyframe. Well, when I moved the ball, it made a keyframe at one second for position. And I want to click this diamond to add a keyframe there. So this goes like this, up round, down round. Okay, and it's just going to stay there. And I remember what I want to do is I want to keep it here just for a moment so I can throw the, the squish in. So I'm going to take these two and copy them. Command C and paste them there. Or actually, what I could do is I could just slide forward and do this. Pop. Uh, both of these were selected, so when I hit one keyframe, it made both. So same thing. It's like this: up round, down round, stay down round. Okay. 
So between here and here, these digits are the same. This position and this position are the same. This scale and this scale are the same. So we don't see any movement because these are all the same. And you might think, well, that's kind of redundant. Why is that? What it does is it isolates, it stops it from squishing in here. Um, so if I park right here between these two scales, break the link if it's not already broken, and take the Y value and smash the ball down flat like that. What I've got is this. It'll go down and squish and then unsquish. So what this is is it goes round, squish, and then back to round. And then it just sits there. Okay? So it's just going to sit there until I tell it what to do. So at two seconds, I'm going to grab it and lift it back up almost to where it was before because here's let's let's think about this realistically if I start up there when the ball falls and bounces and goes back up because of gravity it won't go all the way back to where it was each time the position will go a little bit lower so it's gonna go bounce not as high okay now what I can do to shortcut is select the bounce and up right there copy them command C move forward and paste them. So now what I've got is this, up, bounce, not as high, and then bounce, and then this one here should also go not as high, like this. Okay, so I'm going to grab this and pull it down a little bit while sitting on this keyframe. If I'm not sitting right on that keyframe and I change this, I'm going to get a glitch in the animation. So if that happens to you, what you can do, I'll do it wrong on purpose, watch this. Like, what I want to do is, on this keyframe right here, I'll see what happened. I accidentally messed these keyframes up because when I changed this, everything was selected. So I'm going to back out. When I say back out, I mean I'm going to pull down Command and hit Z until Command Z takes you back a step before I made a mistake. See how these are all blue? They're all selected. So when I, when I, when I went over here and changed this value, I forget what I did. I, I went and I moved... Oh, I know what I did. I went to move this ball down a little bit, but all these keyframes were selected, so I changed all of them up by accident. So let's see how easy it is to mess things up? So watch. It goes bounce up, bounce up. What I'm after is this keyframe, just this one, I want to make slightly lower, lower like that, okay? Every time. So when it bounces, it bounces and then goes up not as high, and then bounces and goes up not as high, Right? I'm going to select all these, copy, paste them. This keyframe right here, I want to jump and sit right on it. I'm sitting on it right there, and I want to make it not as high. Right? Select all these guys, copy them, Command C, move forward in time, paste it. So it's going to go bounce, and I want to sit right on that keyframe, jump and sit right on that one. Only have that one selected so I don't accidentally change all these. So these were all selected. If I change anything right now, it's going to change all these keyframes. I don't want that. I only want that one changed. So select the one you want to change. Make absolutely sure you're sitting right on that keyframe so that you don't change other keyframes. I'm going to drag it down and make it even lower. And let me move my work here and see what this looks like. I hit play. So it falls and bounces and goes not as high. Bounces and goes not as high. Bounces and goes not as high bounces and goes not as high. So, in principle things are kind of right. If you think about the timing of this though, this time increment is fairly consistent, right? Like I've got a second here, I've got mm, less than a second there, let's call this somewhere around half a second there, this is about a half a second there, this is about a half, this is about a half. So all these are half seconds. Now, what's funny about that is uh, speed is distance traveled over time, okay? So this should really be getting faster. If it's if it's not going as high each time, like when it comes up here, this isn't traveling as far, so it shouldn't take as long. So these time increments should be getting shorter and shorter. Like when you when you drop a ball and it bounces, it doesn't keep a beat. It doesn't go bounce one, bounce one, bounce one, bounce one. It gets faster. It goes bounce, 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 like that, right? When you bounce something, it it runs out of a. Uh, the time gets shorter and shorter. So there's, I don't think there's a shortcut. I always do this manually. So what I would do is just 
um, move this out of the way, select all these keyframes and just make it a little shorter. And then everything from here on, make it a little shorter. And then everything from here on, make it a little shorter. And just do it manually. Whoops, I just slid all that stuff. I just did an undo command Z. Um, see what I'm doing? I'm sliding these shorter. Take all this, move it closer. Take all this and move it closer. Let's see what this looks like now. Bounces up, bounces up, not as high each time. Bounce high. All right, so it's not going to be perfect because I'm not spending a lot of time on it. But if you want to really make it good, what I'm trying to figure out here is this, um, this next keyframe right here, this I'm going to get rid of. So the ball just stops. So it's going to bounce a couple times and then stop. If I wanted the squishes to be quicker, I could take all these, select them like this, whoops, just grab the bounce, I mean the squish, pull down option, and grab the edge of it and smash them to make them quicker. So I could select all that, hold down option, make them closer together, so that my squish happen a little faster. Okay, whoops, I'm going to slide the whole thing. That was an accident, ignore that. Control, trying to uh, option, here's that. Let's see what this looks like. Play. So it goes squish. Now there's one more thing that doesn't look quite right that you might notice. At the top of the bounce, right there, at the top, watch, top. At the top, it just abruptly changes direction. And a ball wouldn't do that. When it, when it goes up in the air, it wouldn't just go front, go like 10 miles an hour moving in one direction and then in an instant do 180 degree change of direction and go 10 miles an hour downwards. Uh, that's very unnatural looking. So what we want to do is this, this position change where it goes from um, this keyframe right here where it, here it's moving up and then when it trips over this keyframe it just changes direction and starts moving down. This keyframe what we want to do is put something on it called an ease and what an ease does is it, it says get slower and slower and slower and slower until you hit this. And then when you leave this keyframe heading this direction, start slow and get faster and faster and faster. It has to do with the motion path. See, the, see how these little dots are equal increments? So what After Effects is doing is every frame, it's taking the distance and dividing it equally. So if it has, if it has 10 feet to traverse over 10 seconds, it'll move one foot per second. It, it divides it equally. And that's what makes it look very robotic when it goes, it's like moving up, moving up, moving up, moving down, moving down, moving down. It just it just clicks and changes direction right there. And what we want to do is we want to say slow down and kind of like what's called a stall. Like if you throw a paper airplane straight up in the air, or not even a paper airplane, a ball, when you throw something straight up in the air, it gets slower and slower and slower until gravity takes over and then it stalls and it's still for just a split second and then it starts falling. So we want to create that illusion by clicking on this keyframe, going to animation, and saying keyframe assistant, and saying there's three different options. You got easy ease, ease in, and easy ease out. Ease in is like when you uh, slide something, like, a, like if you take a glass and slide it on a table. It'll start off sliding quickly, and as it runs out of inertia, it'll get slower and slower until it stops. That's an ease in on the on the second keyframe. Ease out is like when you uh, peel out in a car when you slam on a gas pedal and the wheel spins and the car doesn't start moving yet and it gradually starts moving slower and then goes faster and faster and faster. That's an ease out. Easy ease is both. So easy ease is slow down coming in and slow down going out. So I want to take this frame and choose keyframe assistant easy ease. And you'll see it changes the look of the keyframe to look like a little hourglass. So see if you can tell the difference between this one and this one. One is going to be nice and smooth and one's going to be kind of robotic. Watch. Bounce and watch the ease. Ooh, there it is. Now watch this one. Eh. See the difference? Look at it again. Goes down. The first one is nice, the second one's kind of jerky. So I want to do that to each one. Select that one, go animation, a key from assistant, easy ease. I think there's a shortcut. I think if you click on this and try Control click, 
you can say keyframe interpolation, keyframe assistant, easy ease, or F9 might work. See that? It says F9 right there. Depending on your keyboard, that might work. All right, so let's look at this now. Uh, hit play. So it goes starting over, falls, bounce, slow, slow, eases. Pretty nice, okay? Now you could do this with more bounces for practice. I don't know how many this is. I got one, two, three, and then it stops. I usually do more than that. I'm trying to keep these short. So boing, 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 boing. All right, and you could tweak the distance between this to make it look more natural if you want, but you get the idea. This is mostly a demonstration of how to do keyframes, how to think about making a bounce, and putting an ease on there, okay? So I'm going to save this for now, and then we're going to do a couple more things in the next bit.